become exhausted already. I think we've got about a mile. <laughs> Once again, we are at Hutton Park Hangars, uh, where we have some more buses to play with. Uh, David, who has let us play with plenty of his buses already, uh, these aren't your buses. No, they belong to a friend of mine called John Dyson. And what makes them interesting? What makes them interesting is that these are both Atkinsons. Okay. Um, quite a rare breed. That yeah, one yeah. actually reveals the fact that it's an Atkinson, but this one is anonymous. Yeah, yeah. But Th this both, one's got the famous badge. They are both Atkinson Alphas. Wow. Um, what happened really, with the, in the early days of underfloor engine buses, they were all massively over-engineered, very heavy. Mm -hmm. A lot of them were actually heavier than a double-decker bus, even oh, though... Oh, grief. Yeah, for, you were talking about maybe 44 seats, and they were heavier than a bus that would carry 64 or 5. Yeah, yeah. And so there was a sort of rebellion on the part of bus operators who wanted something lighter and more economical. Okay, and I, I can some more famous for building trucks. For building trucks, yeah. but uh, one or two operators, particularly Northwestern Road Car and Lancashire United, um, who were fairly local to Preston, where Atkinson's were based, persuaded them to have a go at building a bus. Uh -huh. And Atkinson, of course, were used to assembling proprietary parts to build things more or less yeah, to order. Yeah, they bought engines, chassis, yeah. so axles in from other companies. What everybody wanted, of course, was the Gardner engine because it's the best. Yeah. Um, and Kirkstall axles off the shelf from Kirkstall Forge in Leeds. Uh, gearboxes, well, you had the choice. Atkinson had their own five-speed um, constant mesh gearbox, which was fairly hard work, I think. Yeah, that sounds very hard work, um, yeah. So some operators, such as SHMD here, opted for a David Brown uh, Synchromesh gearbox. Okay. Where David Brown found this gearbox, I don't know. It perhaps come out of one of their tractors. It's, it's not yeah, awfully yeah. Synchromesh. Um, this particular vehicle um, was delivered with a constant mesh box and immediately there was a rebellion by the trade union who said we ain't driving this and so it was converted to a pneumocyclic an air operated okay. yeah, gearbox yeah. so it now curiously has vacuum brakes and an air operated gearbox interesting yeah. so uh, the, the one this side is the elder of the two but yeah not as old as it looks to me these look like they're for almost different generations but yes what uh, are the years well this is 1956 okay but um shmd actually had four of these they they bought two slightly earlier i think it was about 54 or 55 and then they bought two similar ones later on so it is a slightly older design this. yeah yeah um, very similar vehicles delivered to Lancashire United. Okay. Um, this is a relic of the era when bus operators briefly were going through the period of thinking that the answer to all their problems was continental style operation, where they would get rid of double deckers, they would have single deckers, they would persuade people to stand and okay. pack them full. So this bus was actually designed to carry 60 passengers. Okay, should we go and have a look at the uh, yeah. interior then? Once again, as on other buses of this era, just getting on board is a bit of a challenge. Yes. And the well, centre exit, yes. or entrance and exit. Yeah. Your, your problem, of course, is once you actually get a fairly hefty engine like the Gardner and turn it on its side, there's a minimum rule about ground clearance. Yeah, yeah. So you end up, by default, having to have massive great steps to get up. So the engine is the about bus. here? Is the it? engine is sort of just under here, forward of the of the entrance, yes. Gosh. So then a proper clamber aboard. And plenty of standing room. Yes. So what is the actual capacity of this bus? Well, 60. You've got 34 seats. Blimey. And then the rest were to stand. Now, Gosh. bear in mind, you've only got seven litres of yeah, yeah. five-cylinder Gardner engine. That would be fairly hefty going. Indeed. I, I think, actually, the, the SHMD board worked on the principle that people... There were quite short journeys that these buses were making. So hop on, hop uh, off. Yeah, you, well, basically hop on and go to the end of the line with most of them. Because um, you, were, you were going from Mossley into ashton under line That was their main Okay. Thing. And you were likely to only be standing for maybe 10 or 15 minutes. So maybe that wasn't a huge imposition. Uh, I, I still wouldn't like to be a conductor trying to get up and down no, no, with no. a standing load. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it would still be fairly hard work. 
Yeah. But you weren't on the bus all that long. But of course, not good if you're a, a parent with push chairs, and no, small no. children. Not good if you're an elderly person with shopping bags. Uh, quite hard work. Or a camera lady rather short of legs. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And of course here we have the famous Northern Counties patented air changing system. So you have the grills in the ceiling. Yeah. And all the cigarette smoke and essence of wet raincoat and everything would be drawn up into there, yeah. sucked down through this hollow shaft, and that oh, goes... Oh gosh, yes, you can see the separate yep, pieces and that goes down to the engine inlet manifold. Right. So the idea is that it creates this constant movement of air through the bus. And failing that, we have got windows. And failing that, we have got windows, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Gosh. And uh, plenty of leather straps for everyone. All the way down, yes. Yeah. So you can, uh, and of course you've got this area here where you can herd 12 people yeah. into here and they can all cling on for grim God, It's like airport buses ahead of its time. Yes. 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 This was what um, Atkinson called their lightweight version. Okay. Uh, five cylinder horizontal engine. The Atkinson over here, the Sunderland one, this is a medium weight version. So this is 33 feet long, it's three feet longer. Okay. And this has the six HLW. Mm -hmm. So you've got a bit more go to make yeah. up for the extra weight. So when we say horizontal, it's not a, a flat engine. It, it's just a straight it's engine. It's laid on over. its side, yeah, yeah. yes. Yeah. Um, Super. Okay, let's go and have a look at on, on board this one. Oh, it's not quite so extreme. No, you, you have, as you can see, you've got the very early clunky version of the pneumocyclic yeah, yeah, yeah. selector. It's like it's designed for a giant, but it, it, it's a, a, a blend of colors unlike anything I've ever seen. I've <laughs> yeah. we've got blues, we've got maroons, we've got these wonderful seats. Some, someone didn't really judge it perfectly, I don't well, think. Well, it's either that or they sort of bought a job lot of stuff and just decided maybe. to use it up. Yeah, yeah. Well, yes, there is blue in, in there, I suppose. Yes, and of course you've got the... Because this was designed for one-man operation, yeah, Sunderland yeah. were very early into one-man operation and flat fares and all that type of thing. And so it was designed with a central exit. Okay. Although it's a central exit designed for small people because tall people your opportunity presents itself do that <laughs> yeah that's yes here is a tailor made bus for you yeah that is that. um a bit of a strange exit <laughs> maneuver yeah yeah and something else i love is the sign here yes smoking allowed after 7 p.m beyond this point before <laughs> that no smoking and no smoking ahead of that sign I'm not sure what sort of difference that would make, really. I think the smoke would circulate quite no, well. No, well, uh, bus drivers have always told me that as soon as you have the signalling window open, it just sucks all the cigarette smoke to the front. Oh, So gosh. logically, it would be better to have the smokers at the front of the bus anyway, rather yeah, than yeah. at the back. Blimey. But Different times. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And again, these are a sort of very much a period feature, these yeah. lights. Beautiful. <laughs> so how many of these Atkinsons survive at all? Well... Because I don't think they're made very many They built, I, I believe it was 118 altogether. Blimey. Um, and there are only about six or seven left. Um, there are actually two of these Sunderlands. This, these um, Sunderland, this is the first mm -hmm. of a batch of three. This number 46, number 48 survives, number 47 ended up being scrapped. Um, so there is one up on uh, um, in the northeast, okay, uh, and this one, John's bus. There, there, there are a couple of northwestern ones which were even more eccentric because they were actually rear entrance. Okay. So conductor. Well, I suppose like like some of the double deckers would have been at the time. Yeah. Yes. There's there's one of those which has been restored, and there's one of them which I believe is in a scrapyard somewhere, wanting somebody to love it. Yeah. Um, and there's supposed to be a coach-bodied one knocking about somewhere because there were a number built as coaches. There was. Mm -hmm. um, there was a, a group, the Feather Group in Lancashire, who owned several small coach companies, and they had quite a few Atkinsons, which oh. they bought in penny numbers over a period of time. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, they're a, they're quite a rare beast now. So to have two together is quite unusual. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think John originally thought he was looking at this one for 
spare parts oh, because he'd already acquired yeah, yeah. one. And then he thought, well, this is too good to mm. let it go. So the result is that we have to... And, of course, he, they're, they're completely different anyway because they're yeah. virtually hand-built to the yeah. customer's requirements. Yeah, it, it, it's staggering the difference. I mean, what is there, six years between mm. the two of them? And yeah, then, 56 yeah. and 63, yes. They're very, very different. Very different. Right. Well, let's go and take uh, the older one for a drive first as um, I learn about sort of synchromesh. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that was a physical workout. Can you imagine doing that for an eight hour shift? No thank you. The clutch, really quite heavy. The throttle, incredibly heavy. The brakes, so-so, they're sort of there. The gear lever's heavy, the steering is heavy because the engine is effectively sort of just behind the front axle. Yeah, that was a good workout. Demonstration.
anybody is pondering a life of YouTube and how very glamorous it is, I'm stood on the side of the road waiting for him to turn a bus around right now. That was amazing, but I'm quite glad to do this. Uh. <laughs> oh. Oi. Oh. That's a bus from back when men were real men. And apparently I'm not one of those, but gosh, what a fantastic piece of mobile history. Uh, a reminder that things were much, much harder back in the past. It will be very interesting to see how the other bus compares. Might need to sit down first. All right, so here we go in the uh, slightly later bus. Got a Numo cyclic gearbox, which makes all sorts of interesting noises. Just build a bit of speed up. Oh, it might have been a bit early for fourth. But at least I haven't got to double declutch my way back down the gearbox in this one. And it just feels so much more modern. So the last one was a five cylinder, this has a whopping six. And you certainly feel as the driver a bit more um, involved with things in this one. We've got the door there, you'll be selling your tickets right here. Unleash the full power of that Gardner engine. That's apparently it. That's still entirely manual steering, so still very, very hard work. And still vacuum brakes as well. Despite the fact we've got air for the gearbox. Yeah, imagine trying to drive this with a manual gearbox. Oh, MGB. MGB launched just before this bus was made. Might have been ambitious. We're going to go up third gear screaming. Not enough power for top yet. Wait for it to level out. Fabulous exhaust note. So a much more modern look to the thing, but in terms of driving effort, yes, it's nice not to have a clutch pedal, but with a manual steering still very much evident, still quite hard work for your shift. Boy, well there we go, uh, two very, very rare Atkinson buses put through their paces. Huge thanks to David uh, for arranging this. Um, there can't be many people who've driven two Atkinsons in modern times. 
I can kind of see why no one wants to rush to, to do that. My arms, my back, my legs, everything is aching. But uh, yeah, hat truly doffed to all those who drove these buses back in the day. They must have had muscles like Arnold Schwarzenegger. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget you can head to the Hubnut Style and don't forget you can visit these buses at Hooton Park Hangars. They do have open days. Check out their fa fa uh, Facebook page and we'll see you in a future video. Farewell. That was the worst idea I've ever had. I thought it was an excellent idea, that's what you said. Well. <laughs>